Uh, James Whitey Bulger, I think, is, uh, history will show, is one of the more significant crime figures in the 20th century. No single criminal has ever been able to corrupt the FBI to the extent that he did. To me, growing up in South Boston, he was a kind of mythical figure that um, everyone knew ran the town. He was also kind of a father figure in the neighborhood. He's charged with a, a racketeering indictment, uh, of which there are over 30 so-called predicate acts ranging from loan sharking, gambling, drug trafficking, extortion, and he's uh, accused of 19 murders. As Brian Kelly, the prosecutor, described at the openings, Whitey Bulger was a hands-on killer. He killed people himself. Whitey Bulger brought the FBI in Boston to its knees. He succeeded in enlisting and corrupting a band of FBI agents in Boston to serve him and protect him, to enable him in the late 70s to rise to underworld power, and then had his back during a reign of terror. There was an FBI national policy to take out La Cosa Nostra, and in that guise, they decided to make deals with criminals like Whitey Bulger, Irish-American gangsters here in Boston. The problem with that is twofold. First of all, Whitey Bulger didn't know much about the mafia. Second of all, Whitey Bulger was as bad as anybody in the mafia. And South Boston is a player in the story. Southie is very Irish in ethos, and there's nothing there that's prized more than loyalty. Loyalty to your family, loyalty to your friends, loyalty to your neighbors, and loyalty to your neighborhood. Uh, but when loyalty comes to mean that you can kill me in front of 100 people in a crowded bar and that nobody's going to speak up, then loyalty has become a bad thing. And that happened. That happened in our neighborhood. For more than two decades now, the horrible truth has revealed is that he's a rat, uh, that he oversaw drug trafficking. Indeed, he's admitted in his, his opening argument that he made millions off of drugs. So the myth of Whitey Bulger has been exploded. He was indicted in, in, in early 1995, and he escaped uh, because his corrupt FBI agent handler, the key agent uh, who, who, you know, who was working with or for him, uh, tipped him off. The FBI in this case is an unindicted co-conspirator. His lawyer made it clear in his opening statement, Jay Carney said he was not an informant and he did not kill those women. Those are the two things. He knows he's going to die in prison. That's not what this is about. He needs to rehabilitate his reputation. He spent his entire life creating this narrative arc of him as a good, bad guy. A gangster with scruples. A criminal with standards. And a gangster with scruples does not turn on his friends and he does not murder defenseless women and bury them in shallow graves. I think he's fully engaged in this. This for him is what it's all about. I mean, back in the 70s and 80s, it was about running the underworld and that kind of power and control. I think when he was on the run and living in Santa Monica, California, it was about catch me if you can. And now it's like, okay, this is the courtroom, this is the drama. Yeah, he knows he's toast, but he's not going to go down easy.